Galactic Civilizations 4 Supernova has just released and it's an unapologetically large space 4x strategy game with a high level of customization backed by Alien GPT, a very interesting lore-based AI model. And this video is brought to you by Stardock. Thank you Stardock Games for sponsoring this video. I'll have a link below so you can check out Galactic Civilizations 4. And now let's jump into some of the juicy stuff. Starting with Civilizations, Galactic Ones, and of course, Alien GPT, the AI generated field that will help us build a custom civilization. Now, obviously it's completely player controlled as well. You don't have to use it. And in many ways, you will still be making some important decisions. Like for example, the type of planet, the logo you wish to use, or you could even upload your own custom one from your computer. Are the cultural affinity of your people a very impressive sort of cultural tree and progression mechanic that plays out throughout Galsiv 4 starts right here. And of course, the characteristics of your biology, for example. Where the alien GPT function comes in, obviously derived from chat GPT, is this short description at the top here, which while I don't quite nail the spelling on, I go for something like peaceful pandas, diplomacy, scientific achievements, that's their thing, and eventually settle on the name Peaceful Pandas because of that wonderful alliteration there. And after I select a couple of behaviors that seem pretty fitting, it's over to Alien GPT for it to generate various fields in and around it. Starting with this written description, on the one hand, it's what you would expect from a ChatGPT inspired program, right? It's fairly well written, lengthy, goes into detail where you'd expect it based off the prompt. On another level though, it does something really interesting because it kind of makes me feel as though what I've created was in the game initially. It feels like it's kind of meant to be there rather than just renaming a sieve that already was. For that reason, it really makes the customization feel kind of official, I suppose, would be the best way to put it. And of course, you're going to need an official seal of approval and an official portrait. And that's where, again, you could choose to upload your own or rely on Alien GPT to produce something reasonable. And in this case, it nails it in some of them, not so much granted in others. But at the end of the day, it ultimately produced exactly what I'd hoped for. I mean, look at this guy. Peaceful pandas. All that he's missing is a dove sitting on his shoulder. Uh, moving through, there is still more customization at play around your civilization, including the citizens themselves. The different traits that they have here, empathetic and ravenous, making for an interesting combo. Uh, and of course, what they look like and their traits, which will affect how the game actually plays. Things like science, production, those yields that you'd be used to in a 4X experience. But the customization doesn't quite stop there. And actually, this is a pretty good segue into my second point, the ship builder. So when you jump into a game, important to note also on the side that there's a, a Huge variety here and just how large you'd like the galaxy to be. I believe a single player game can have up to 64 players here, a medium one with up to 35 on offer. So the scale here, uh, it would be fair to say is pretty gargantuan. But then right back down to the detail again, let's talk about the ships and their designer. Let's say you get into your game, Peaceful Pandas on the planet Harmonia, love it. And you just think, actually, you know what? This isn't quite right. Well, this is where the new ship designer comes in and this puppy is set to impress or make ludicrous things. It's entirely up to you. Let's take a little bit of a closer look at it. So here I'm starting with kind of a default ship model and I wanna add some parts on it, some functional parts, mind you. Maybe it's a supply cache, maybe it's a colonial pod, or whatever it might be, it's gonna give this ship some utility. But of course, I'm also changing the way it looks, right? The actual design. And here with what I can only describe as kind of a Gmod TTT level of things available for me to choose and crucially customize down to scale, rotation, offset, all that kind of thing. You can get into some really interesting ship designs, quite genuinely. On this, what you'll ultimately see turns into a bit of a monstrosity. I'd like to say purposefully. I think I spent about 25 minutes, believe it or not, just playing around with different things. So I've taken the base ship, put some J's horrendously on the front, and now I've decided to turn it ridiculous. Spin it around, make it look a little bit like an evil crow, right? 
kind of. I mean, it kind of already looked like that from the start. Uh, speaking of from the start, here was another game, this absolute monstrosity from some angles, while also a really nice looking ship from others. I thought, you know what? <laughs> I can... Uh, I can do one better than this. So I started by stripping everything back because of course you can customize the individual parts that are already there as well across X, Y, and Z axes to try and sort of just fine tune it a little bit to the way you like it. I'm thinking, okay, this is kind of cool. Cross between a staff, wars, maybe X-wing and more of an Imperial ship, a cruiser. Add a couple of things on for some utility, right? A little bit of weaponry there and then kind of bring it all together in what turned into a monstrosity here. But wait, friends, it gets even better because the scale of these props and customization is truly fantastical. Here, adding a few rocks onto the edge of my X-Wing, bringing it around. And of course, the tactical element is really important here too, right? The cost of the item, the ship, will depend on what I'm putting on it. Its hit points, its movement points, what it can actually do in the game. So while on the one level it's this fantastical me kind of playing around with a funny customizer for a ship builder, on the other hand, it's really practical and beautifully detailed. And I think it does Galactic Civilizations 4 Supernova a, a real service and a real justice. If you're playing this game, I'd encourage you to have a play with this in particular. But now let's take a step back, or shall I say a deep dive in, to this game's 4X fundamentals. Pretty important for a Space 4X strategy game like Galactic Civilizations 4. Uh, in the beginning, there was a planet and four ships. A surveyor and a probe, both designed to explore, though the probe is unmanned. We also have a seed or, or colony ship to colonize new worlds, and a packet freighter ship that we'll use a little bit later down the line to establish some trade routes. Uh, the probe and surveyors get sent out first. The probe is, as I mentioned, unmanned. You can explore the map, get rid of that fog, the unknown, and then the surveyor can come in and detect and research anomalies for in-game events. Uh, on top of them, as I mentioned, you've got the colony ship. This one, of course, pretty important for establishing your foothold, tentacle hold, whatever hold you have, a poor hold for the peaceful pandas uh, on new worlds, colonies or core worlds that you can manage. Uh, speaking of which, of course, your primary planet will be one of those, and inside of here you'll find that kind of uh, hex grid-based a sort of development focused area of this 4X game with improvements that I can drag, drop and place in a really interesting, nuanced and not too overcomplicated system of tile adjacencies as well as certain tiles or areas of the world presenting their own bonuses to different yields, uh, wealth, manufacturing, so on and so forth. The adjacencies though, alongside the normal districts are I think quite satisfying, again fairly straightforward to use, not overly difficult to understand, but there's a lot of complexity behind them. And of course, in thinking ahead, how do I want to utilize different terrain types? Stepping back out from a planet though, and looking at something right next door, of course, it's the shipyard, which we've already looked at when it comes to designing ships, but it plays another very crucial role, and that is building our combat fleets too. Combat plays out in a couple of different ways. You can do these quick fights, as you can see here, shoot them, during your turn, and hopefully if you'll come out on top, well, you'll do just that. Uh, oh, this is generally a pretty easy way to run the fights. It's fairly quick, but you might not quite get the detail that you will from watching this destructive fight, because you can also watch them play out. And this is, again, one of the things that Galactic Civilizations does as a step up from perhaps some other titles. Here we can jump into the follow cam if we want to see the live and destructive obliteration of our poor fighters. Alternatively, you've got top-down views, cinematic views. It's just generally a lot of fun to jump in, particularly of course if you're invested in your ships and you've designed them like we talked about earlier. And if the sort of more aggressive conquest isn't quite your thing, you can of course also use the constructor ships that I mentioned before to build mining, communications or military star bases. These outposts of sorts will allow you to potentially grab extra resources like I'm doing here with this Illyrium mine mining star base. Alternatively, you could boost your influence, research a special uh, sort of ancient people's artifact, if you will, or alternatively equip this thing out with a whole load of rockets and use it as a defensive or aggressive one. Uh, either way, you'll be able to collect resources, maybe sell them on the bazaar, and all of this comes together to build a very rich world. One which is further supplemented by the many 
many events. Again, backed up by Alien GPT and leaning into the lore that you've built around your civilization and the others in the world too. It does a pretty good job at capturing it, and some of the rewards that you can get, for example, might lean into its vault system. A system I really like for quick one-off effects and awards from various events or anomalies researched. Alternatively, uh, some of the other events can focus around specific things that you're doing throughout your campaign. Here, for example, in this very early clip, I'm settling my first colony, uh, supplemented by a nice animation as you move through, just like the mines. And again, there are decisions to be made around the planets, their people, and ultimately, in this case, their resources and their output. How should I utilize this leftover uh, precursor factory to the best of my people and my economy, which is further strengthened through Galactic Civilization 4's diplomatic system, where I can of course trade those resources or awards that I might have picked up, among many other things. And to bring it back just one more time to these events, sometimes they can lean into other awards, not just approval, uh, pollution, food, your treasury, but actually leaning into the very sort of ideological makeup or cultural progression of your people, which is split across these categories from pacifism to totalitarianism, nihilism, or individualism. All of the isms are on offer, and each one of them presents this tree with relatively uh, strong, progressively stronger abilities. And not to overwhelm you too much with information overload in this video, at a broader level, at a wider level, outside of the ideologies of your people, you have this civilization management screen, which is pretty dang good. On the right hand side, available policies that will be unlocked through the game's progressive and deep tech tree. In the middle, where you place the policies, your policy slots, and on the left, a breakdown of your expenses, approval rate, tax rate, and the overall outputs of your civilization. It makes it really easy to identify areas where you might not be doing so hot at this much higher, much broader level. And the policy decisions that you make generally have trade-offs. So there's always something to be given up in exchange for a benefit. And that, my friends, is really just scratching the surface of all the kinds of actions, the technologies and the rich, poor, tabbed, technology tree that takes you through the game. Or perhaps take these executive actions that provide a one-punch hit in a certain yield, perhaps, at the cost of some of your control. Ultimately, I think that there's plenty more to unpack, and that's why, if you've watched until the end of the video, I'd love your feedback. I'm going to be making another video on Galsiv 4. Do you want another one like this, where I go through, perhaps, the remaining big things and talk about how they play out? Or maybe something a bit more strategy focused, first turns, beginner's guide tips and tricks. Let me know and check out the sponsored link below for Galactic Civilizations 4. I'll see you next time.